Hey friend, in today's episode, I'm going to explain the style personality system behind the what's your style personality quiz I built just for fun and how it connects to Myers-Briggs and what's coming next around my obsession with style and personality. First, if you can't wait to take the quiz and you haven't taken it yet, you can find the link to the quiz in the description below or at my website, SignatureStyleSystems.com. So back when I first encountered Carla's book, The Style of, really? <laughs> the Triumph of Individual Style, there was another book, more on style personality, we also looked at in the little homeschool class my daughters and I were participating in. The title of that book is Fabulous You, the author is Tori Hartman, and the publication year was 1995. So with this information in the back of my mind and some time on my hands during COVID lockdowns, I went to create a style personality quiz. Now, I don't know if you've ever looked at what it takes to create a quiz, but the platforms are super expensive and I'm not like a computer expert. I have, I was taking a class on um, instructional design and played with genially a little bit. And so that is where I built this course. And um, I updated the language on the style types to make them all sound equally positive. That was, that was my goal. It maybe was just in my mind that I had some I don't know, problems with some of the uh, types and I want everybody's style to be equally considered beautiful. So anyway, um, and then because everyone's style is so complex and personal, I added accent types. So there's a total of, in this quiz, 30 possible outcomes. Um, and then you can download, so you can take the quiz, it's free, and you can download um, a little slide that I made that talks about your personality type. So the six personality types, uh, the first one, I just listed these sort of in order. I didn't think about it too hard before I started here. But anyway, the first one is romantic. And romantic is characterized by curved lines, soft fabrics, and a hint of vintage style. The second one is classic, which is understated elegance and quality. The third I called modern, which is polished and current. And the fourth one is dramatic. Dramatic styles are bold, striking, powerful, and glamorous. Fifth one is edgy, that's innovative and possibly rebellious. And then uh, the final style type is natural, which is casual, relaxed, and functional. And I'm sure you can probably hear yourself in several of those. So here's my announcement. I am currently enrolled in training to do conversational personality profiling within the framework of Myers-Briggs. And as I've been studying this, I have understood something within my quiz and personality type system that's eluded me until now. So two things that uh, were already clear to me about this system and yeah, part of why, honestly, I wasn't even all that excited about using it, even though it is a fun quiz. I totally recommend you take the quiz, but um, it, so two things that I understood already that were really clear. It is sort of a spiral in terms of how people relate to trend, trends and what's popular. It's a spiral or a ladder or a you know a line it's a progression in terms of how people um whether they want to wear trends how soon you know whether they're a you know an early adopter and that all that kind of stuff then the second thing is there is sort of a dichotomy in and this is from the book 
half the styles are motivated by factors in the external world and half of them are motivated by the internal world, but it doesn't really perfectly overlay with introversion and extroversion. So um, here's what I figured out about that. In the book, it's called Above the Equator and Below the Equator. And let me see if I can. So the romantic, edgy, and natural are all below the equator. And the classic, modern, and dramatic are all above the equator. And um, so this, re I figured out this relates to in the Myers-Briggs system, how people make decisions, which makes sense. I mean, when you're choosing what to wear, you're making a decision. Um, so it's not just about like, you know, thinking and feeling one of these being above the equator and one of them being below. It's actually about the Jungian cognitive functions, either introverted thinking or feeling or extroverted thinking or feeling. So, um, yeah, so you're either using your decision-making function in an introverted way that is looking to yourself for making that decision or in an extroverted way. And, you know, it, it may not always be easy for you to see that in yourself, which is, if this doesn't make sense to you, then you wear what you want and choose whatever makes sense to you when you go through the quiz um, without getting too technical because there is kind of a massive wild card in this model it roughly maps onto the j and the p dichotomy which is judging and perceiving judging being more about making decisions and perceiving being more about uh learning and going through the world in a more open frame. So uh, here's your homework. Homework is just take the quiz. And when you take the quiz, one of the first things you will be asked is around this intrinsic or extre extrinsic, can I say this? Extrinsic motivation. If the question makes sense to you, because I give some um, examples on that slide, um, then just proceed. This is ultimately all about you. And what I mean by that is that systems exist for self-discovery. They serve you. You don't serve the system. So, but if it's hard for you and you want a little key code, here it is. If your Myers-Briggs type ends in J, at that slide, when you're asked to choose one or the other, choose extrinsic. If it ends in P, choose intrinsic. And that's it. Thank you so much for being here for the Signature Style Systems podcast. Uh, have fun being you and I'll meet you back here soon.